Hello, Judy here again. I wanted to talk about what waiting for the rapture has done for me. Um, and I would think it would be really great if in the comment section you could link a video or a comment about how waiting for the rapture, uh, what it has done for you, the positives in your relationship with the Lord as a result of the waiting process. And I'm talking to brides right now who are on the edge of their seat, the bride of Christ. I'm not, you know, I'm talking to people who are rapture centric and just dying to see the Lord. Their wait can't wait for the rescue, which is part of the rapture mission of the Lord to his creation is to rescue us from this evil place. And they just, they can't wait to see him. They want to see him. They want to start their new life. They want to be face to face with the lover of their soul. Finally. Um, I want to hear it. I want to see it. We can have fun with this. Um, so I'm going to start, I'm going to talk about, um, what waiting for the rapture has done for me and what it's looked like in my life. So, um, a lot of people talk about g getting spotless and pure. Um, um, in the waiting process, repenting all day long and, you know, <laughs> trying not to sin. So many people talk about that part of it. You know, I'm an old, I'm an old lady, so I'm 47 now. And the Lord fell on my son when I was 43, turning 44. So, you know, the, I've already fled the, you know, <laughs> the youthful lust of, of the young, young people. I've been there, done that. So, um, my waiting has maybe maybe look a little different than yours. Um, I have just been um, my my waiting has been more of um, uh, wrestling with the Lord. Wait, God, you said this, so why is this happening? It seems to contradict what you said. Why do I have to do this if you told me to leave the evil public school system? You don't want me a part of that evil institution, but I have no money and I got to go back to work somewhere. And you know, God, I don't get it. What are you doing? This is the easiest thing for me to do is to go back doing that. And you know, things like that, things that have just got me in deep, deep wrestling mode, like God, but you said this, this doesn't make any sense. Like you know, so that's what my waiting has looked like. Um, it's been more of a wrestling with God. Um, and um, I've had to forgive uh, people that, um, you know, wanted to hurt my son. And, and different things that have come against us, very mean and hurtful. Um, so I, that's where I've been, you know... Lord, I forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. God bless them. Um, and, and, you know, much of the, I think it would be very hard, and I do have a message for the youth. Um, uh, if you are rapture-centric, the Lord has called you, like, in your early 20s, even early 30s, I mean, just a young person, even in your teens, um, the Lord really wanted me to encourage you. He said it was extra hard for the young people and to encourage them and tell them, you know, um, uh, it, it's hard. It's hard to be in this world and not build a future for yourself. Because everyone else, first of all, you have the pressure of everyone around you. Well, what are you going to do? Even if you're here for a year, you should do something. And, you know, it's it's hard when you're rapture-centric. You're like, but what's the point? Nothing's going to come of it. I'm leaving. It's hard to find motivation. If you're, I'm so glad the Lord called me to be rapture-centric. Um, as an older person, because I just can't imagine how hard it would be. All right. I would have made every mistake in the book already. Okay. <laughs> I would have, <laughs> um, I found the Lord at a really young age, but we went through a lot together. You know, I, 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 um, he brought me through a lot and he's so good. So I just want to encourage you, you know, the Lord loves you. He created you with all your hormones at a young age. He he created you with, you know, it, it talks about it in the Bible. I mean, it says to flee, to flee youthful lusts, you know, the things that are just not healthy. At the same time, the Lord gives you 
energy that, say, an older person doesn't have because they've been there, done that, you know. And, you know, that's the beauty of youth. I mean, and the Lord says not to look down on anyone because they're, if, because they're young. So I just want to encourage you to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might to be kind to yourself, to be patient with yourself. The Lord is certainly patient with you. And a lot of us older, you know, Christians and older in the world as well, because you could be an old Christian and, and be in your 20s because you might have been serving the Lord since you were 16, you know, like I was. So when I was in my 20s, I was a young person, but I was kind of more mature and wise in the Lord because I'd been seeking Him wholeheartedly for many years. So I'm not necessarily, but I'm saying... Those of us that are older, you know, this the whole sin issue doesn't become as big as a thing is 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 our wrestling with God, you know, like um, trying to keep family our families together. I'm a mom, so my focus is, you know, where I find my sin is more worrying, worrying about my son, worrying about this, worrying about that. You know, that's it's just we're all in different places, and so um, my big sin to wrestle with during the rapture waiting has been worry father but you're not here and you told me to let this go but now this is happening and god but he has taken care of everything he really has he's been very faithful and i said was i not supposed to do this lord i mean did i do anything wrong and that's probably one of the biggest prayers i've prayed the whole time is if i did anything wrong please tell me and I even have a couple trusted friends. I'd say, ask the Lord, did I do anything wrong? Because the Lord would tell me, like, no. <laughs> and I didn't believe him. Because I'm like, but but then why am I in this spot, you know? And my, I, a couple people, no. He said, no, you're doing good. You're doing everything right on task. That's why. That's sometimes why things are hard. is because you're doing everything that the Lord asked you. You're doing everything right. And um, so that's been another thing. Um you know, but whatever it is, my sin isn't any worse than yours, okay? But there are greater consequences to sinning in your body, to not keeping yourself pure. You know, stay away from, you know, all sin is bad, okay? So we just give it to the Lord and we're patient with ourselves and we're patient with Him. At the same time, you know, you have to understand that you have to, young people, I'm talking, I'm talking like a mom, all right? The Bible says you don't have many mothers and fathers among you. So I'm going to try to be one because I am one and I'm and I'm older. I'll be 50 in three years. We won't be here. So I'll be in heaven and I'll be all transformed into 22 again, okay? <laughs> uh, but I am a rare case. I actually love getting older. I always have um, in terms of the maturity and the wisdom and I 40 turning 40 was great. I just finally didn't care what anyone thought. It's just I've enjoyed aging. Um not the physical, you know, digression of it. Um I don't really appreciate that, you know. Um and that's so that'll be neat in heaven cuz we'll have all the wisdom of the age, but then we won't look like it, you know. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like um watching my skin deteriorate, you know, and I don't like my cute little freckles not looking cute anymore, you know. <laughs> I'm just blabbing right now, you guys. The Lord's coming, but what the walk has looked like for me is a lot of wrestling, and that's what the waiting process, it's gotten me closer and into, more intimate with the Lord because I've had to talk to Him about every single thing because nothing makes sense, and I've had to, like, really, sometimes I wrestle, but sometimes I just cry and I groan and he's with me and we're together and because I've had to really literally just fall into his arms like out of sheer desperation a lot of the times um and then some of it the, the waiting process has created situations where um it just I had to talk to him about a lot of things and so it brought me closer to him so this waiting process has brought me more intimate with my lord um I either by force or just by will, um, because of the situations he's put me in. And I'm grateful for them. At the time, I'm not. And, you know, today I had a couple moments. Um, and that's where I'm saying the intimacy comes in, because I don't go to anyone but him. I don't go to ten other people. I've just, I've learned. It's like, no one can help me. No one can help me but him. Just go to him. And then if he tells me, oh, call a friend, I'll do that. You know, I'll encourage someone. They'll encourage me. But, you know, the only thing that really matters is intimacy with Christ. So if your sin issue, you know, young people causes you 
to go into his arms and be more intimate with him because you need help with it, then that's a beautiful thing, see? So don't let the enemy discourage you. The Lord is coming. Keep yourself pure and strong in him. At the same time, give yourself grace and kindness. The Lord is patient. Don't heap yourself with condemnation. It's much harder if you're younger to be in this process. The world is much more evil than it was. It's very hard. I'm glad I'm not a teen or in my 20s. I'm just so glad. It's just an evil place with filth everywhere. And um, it was like that too when I was that age, but not as much as it is now. I mean, I, I'm at the high school and I have so many students because I have them write different assignments, writing assignments. And I just have so many people telling me they're afraid of their future. They don't see a future here. And they're not even, you know, we're not even talking about the rapture. It happened today already. We did some back-to-school poetry in the 11th grade. And I had I read three papers like that. I'm worried about my future. I'm, you know, I'm worried about the state of the world. And um, But anyway, so um, I've wrestled a lot with him. I've laughed a lot. I've been blessed. I, I'll have I've, I have surprise blessings happen where, um, you know, the Lord took us to Disneyland through my sister. Um, we've gone on more vacations than we ever did before he fell on my son. We just had different opportunities arise. So it's it's been a tremendous blessing and it's been the best time of my life and the worst time of my life. Um, I've had no control whatsoever, and I, I had a measure of control when I was had a more stable routine. So that lack of control has pushed me into his arms, um, sometimes with tears and sometimes with just questions. So it's it's been a good process. It's been purifying. It's created more intimacy, and that's ultimately what we want. If you're going to marry the creator, your groom, you want to know them. And they want to know you, you know, that's what a marriage is about. So the good and the bad, it's all the same because it draws us closer in. Mostly, though, trials push us in a little closer and a little quicker than the good times. You got to admit, I'm the same way. Okay, so we all are. Okay, we're in this earth. God gets it. He gets it. Might as well be real with him. Um... And some young people, so so if you're, you know, just give yourself grace, but at the same time, hold yourself to a really high standard, and and the Lord will keep you strong and pure, and 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 he and he will take, he'll give, he'll fulfill your desires. The Lord will fill you up. Okay. Um, also, the, when the Lord first fell on my son, he called and caused me to stop everything. I am a really bodily kinesthetic learner, physical type of person. Some people want to sit around and read books all day. I'm, and that's fun. Um, I love historical fiction. But I'm more of a person that's going to be out in the mountains all day. I'm going to be doing physical activity. That's just how God made me. So for me to sit down and do nothing for a year and a half was huge, to just to let it all go. Because really, I'm kind of one of those people that's addicted to adrenaline. I'm addicted to endorphins that come, the endorphin high that you get, adrenaline high you get um, when you are exercising, okay? Um, I just love it, and that's just how God made me. I'm athletic. So he let me get a bike and ride a bike again because I used to ride 100-mile centuries and go on trips, ride 500 miles to Oregon with, you know, just do different things. I've just always been very kind of crazy in that way, and I like that. That's just how God made me, okay? I didn't do my Bikram yoga. I didn't do my cycling. I've recently taken up surfing. Um, and I'm just, that's how God made me. So he speaks to me on those moments um, as well. When we, when God gives us pleasure in doing something, he likes to do it with us. And then you get, God will speak to you in that thing, you know. So to sit on my bed for a year and a half was not what something I would have normally done or chosen. I did it out of obedience to him because I gave up what I like, everything, just to wait for him and to be with him and to sit with him. And um, But now he's letting me, you know, I do yoga again. I bike. To, like I said, I just took up surfing recently. He told me to get a wetsuit, and it's been really fun. Um, so, you know, I cycle to work 20 miles a day and just different things like that. Um 
Um, so that's been an outlet as well. The Lord, when he told me I could start doing stuff again and get off my bed, I was so excited because I appreciate that outlet. Um, because waiting for the Lord is the most amazing thing I've ever done, waiting for the rapture. But it's been very hard because we're still here. It's very painful. <laughs> so he gives you outlets and go with it. You know, don't be like me. I won't be like you, but be yourself. But, you know, it's neat. I mean, when he said I could go riding again, I was so excited. You know, I, I love, I went on a Tahoe trip this summer. My sister and son went, biked all around Tahoe with a group of people and they, they um, worked and volunteered on the ride. My brother and sister volunteered to help the bikers. It was really fun. Cyclists, I should say. Um, I just like getting to the top of a really high mountain and climbing it all day and then going down it. It's really fun. Okay. <laughs> it top speeds like 55 miles an hour on my bike. It's really fun. And going 20 miles an hour through towns. It's, it's really fun. Um, so that intimacy with God when I'm out in the ocean, when I'm on my bike, when I'm in my Bikram yoga class, you know, sweating in the heat, just being with him, it's been good. Um, cause I really don't have desires to do this stuff anymore. I just do it to keep my sanity mostly. And the Lord gave me that outlet because for me, I have to, I have to do that to, to keep me healthy in my mind because it's hard to be rapture centric. The Lord will give you outlets. Just ask him, Lord, what can I do? Should I go walk my dog? Walking my, he told me to get a dog. I love my dog. It's a rapture dog. He's white, <laughs> like a wedding dress. I didn't plan it that way. It was just a, the Lord told me to get a certain dog on Craigslist, and um, he turned out to be this cute little white dog. Um, I like black dogs. My cat's black. I, I mean, I'm just saying, I just think it's funny because I, I call him like the wedding rapture doggy, you know? <laughs> he really, he's scrappy. He's so cute. And um, so that was one thing he let me do. So I take him on walks. It got me out of the house and I would have to interact with people. Cause I mean, I didn't really talk to anyone outside my house for a year and a half, honestly. And so he, you know, got me out in the public again. And, um, I, I'm telling you guys, he's coming, but until he gets here, you know, just what is this walk? What is the weight doing for you? How are you doing it? You know, um, you can talk about it. It's it's healthy. It's good. You're not alone. Um, yes, I, I go through bouts if I don't want to be here. Yes, I actually get tired of food here on earth. I'm like, I don't even want to eat anything. It all just is boring. It doesn't even taste good, you know? <laughs> and then I won't eat and then all of a sudden I'll be starving and then I'll eat anything because I'm so hungry. Um, but, you know, I think this, the tastes in heaven are going to be great. Um, I live in a really nice area where a lot of the food is locally grown. Um, and I'm blessed with that, but sometimes it has no flavor. And I'm like, gosh, I don't know what they're doing to this food, but Jesus come and fix it. Cause I know a tomato did not taste like that when I was a kid, it tasted a lot better. Okay. <laughs> and, um, so, um, it's been wrestling. It's been, you know, having physical outlets to get out the tension of waiting. Um, and um, when I'm not wrestling with God, and when I say wrestling, it's not a negative thing. It's just like, you said this. Why am I doing this? And it's a good thing. We wrestle. He, uh, he always wins, but he, he lets me do my thing because I need to. I have to keep it real with God. Um, but, but it's not just wrestling. A lot of it is just, um, talking to him and waiting for him to tell me what's going on. Um, some of it is quiet desperation sometimes. And, and this is, I have to say, this is most of my walk since I've been waiting. There's no words. It's, it's just, we're together. And, and the waiting has been silent. Um, on both of our ends, um, many, much of, much of it is silent, but it's togetherness. It's something I never had before with the Lord. It's just this understanding that we're going to see each other soon and just being with him. He, I know he's with me in everything. There's a greater presence, um, in the waiting. I have 
and I think his presence has always been there. I'm just, I'm more aware of it because I believe. Um, and, you know, it's always there. But the more you believe, the stronger his presence is. And um, just knowing he's with me and having that confidence. Um, and it's been really neat because there's been times in the waiting that I don't even have to pray. I, it used to, before he fell on my son, I used to, pray for things but I don't even need to because we have this understanding and the silence that if I he'll take care of it if I need that or this or that no I have prayed for some things don't get me wrong but I'm saying a lot of things I I just don't even pray for because I just he's got it it's that silent intimacy that you just trust so you don't you don't have to pray when you trust someone that they're gonna do what they keep their end of the bargain because they're good they're God so that that's happened in the walk and um so yeah, table talk. And um, if you want to share what the waiting's done for you, what it's looked like, go for it. Be great. Be great. Have a great night.